Good morning and welcome to worship. This is a good time and a good place for us to be together today. Please know that whether this is your first time or you're returning, we are so glad to have you with us in this place. Our worship service for today includes communion, and so I invite you in these moments before we begin to gather whatever it is you need for communion right where you find yourself today, bread, wine, cracker, grape juice, water, and to have it with you for worship. Our worship service, Tending the Vineyard, Violence, Grace, and the Way of God, is going to continue the series of parables that Jesus tells in the temple during the last week of his life. And he tells a number of vineyard parables, and this is the third and final one, and probably the hardest. In fact, all the readings for today are pretty awful. They're filled with images of violence and heartbreak and brokenness. They're filled with images of our world. But we're going to be invited to wonder where we might actually find the grace of God in the midst of these stories. And I actually think it's kind of a fabulous thing to wonder about because we might look around in our world and wonder where we find the grace of God in that. So even though these things are hard, we're going to be invited to open our ears and our eyes and our hearts to really hear and listen and pay attention for moments of grace, even if they're hard to sift through in the midst of all the other stuff and hurt of this world. And so one more time before we get ready for worship, I invite you to gather whatever it is you need for communion right where you find yourself today and to know that you are welcome to interact with worship through using the emojis, the comments, or sharing our stream out there for those looking for a place to connect. And so I invite you now to join me in taking a deep breath. And welcome, my beloved, to worship. As always, the words that you see on your screen today, the prayers we pray, the songs we sing, and even communion itself is invitation for you to participate in worship exactly where you are and exactly how you are. So whether you want to do those things, say the words out loud, sing the songs, or simply follow along in your head and in your heart from wherever you find yourself, please know that wherever and however you are, is welcome in this place. And our worship service for today begins with the gathering. Please join me now in our call to worship. We meet in the name of God, composer of creation, source of our life, parent of us all. Amen. We meet in the name of Jesus, planter of grace, brother of a fallen humanity, lover of us all. Amen. 
we meet in the name of the Holy Spirit, spirit of confidence, midwife of change, inspirer of us all. Amen. We meet in the name of community, present with one another and ready to worship Holy God. Amen. And so let us pray our prayer of confession together. Holy God, creator of all, have mercy on us. Jesus Christ, planter of love, have mercy on us. Holy Spirit, breath of life, have mercy on us. Let us in silence remember our own faults and failings and confess not just with our words, but with our hearts. In the community of Christ's church and in the presence of all God's people, we confess to God that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not cared for God's world or respected God's people as we should. 
we own our responsibility and pray for God's pardon. Amen. And so, my beloved, may God forgive us, Christ befriend us, and the Spirit renew and change our lives. Amen. And may we remember that hurt, brokenness, and sin are never the end of God's story or of ours. And so, my beloved, join me in boldly sharing Christ's peace with one another, saying the peace of Christ be with you always. Yes, please take this moment to share Christ's peace, both with those with whom you may be gathered today and those with whom you are always gathered across all distances and divides. Our service for today continues with the word. Our reading today is taken from Isaiah, the fifth chapter. I'll sing a song for my beloved, a love song about a vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard, a fine, well-placed vineyard. He dug the soil and pulled the weeds and planted the very best vines. He built a lookout, built a wine press a vineyard to be proud of. He looked for a vintage yield of grapes, but for all his pains, he got wild grapes. Now listen to what I'm telling you, you who live in Jerusalem and Judah. What do you think is going on between me and my vineyard? What more was there to do to my vineyard that I didn't do? When I expected good grapes, why did I get bitter grapes? Well, now let me tell you what I'll do to my vineyard. I'll tear down its fence. I'll let it go to ruin. I'll knock down the gate and let it be trampled. I'll turn it into a patch of weeds, untended, uncared for, waste. Thistles and thorns will take over. I'll give orders to the clouds. Do not rain on that vineyard, ever. Do you get it? The vineyard of the God of angel armies is the country of Israel. All the men and women of Judah are the garden he was so proud of. He looked for a crop of justice and saw them murdering each other. He looked for a harvest of righteousness and heard only the moans of victims. Word of God, word of life. <laughs> again to yourself oh god make your face shine upon us turn us again to yourself oh god only then will we be saved hear us O shepherd of israel you lead us like a flock God enthroned above cherubim, we know you are glorious. Show us your power, awaken your might. Come to rescue us. Turn us again to yourself, O oh God. Make your face shine upon us. Turn us again to yourself. their joke free us from their scorn Ooh. Oh. turn us again to yourself you brought this fine out of Egypt and planted us in
make your face shine upon us Turn us again to yourself, oh God Only then will we be saved How Many by John Birch How many times each day do you come to me, Jesus? How many quiet prophets, how many whispered warnings are sent to catch my attention? And how many times do I pass by unaware of your calm presence, unfeeling of your beckoning gaze? How often have I shunned your messengers, sending them away with clipped words and cold eyes? How often have I hurt the agents of your care, too busy or self-absorbed to notice your invitation in their words? Forgive me, Lord, when through neglect, preoccupation, or wrongfulness, I turn my back on you. Teach me to see, to listen, and to walk with an open heart, so that I can welcome you and answer you when, in grace and love, you call me to follow. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus said to the people, here's another story, listen closely. There was once a landowner, a wealthy farmer who planted a vineyard. He fenced it, dug a wine press, put up a watchtower, then turned it over to the farmhands and went off on a trip. When it was time to harvest the grapes, he sent his servants back to collect his profits. The farmhands grabbed the first servant and beat him. The next one they murdered, they threw stones at the third. The owner tried again, sending more servants. They got the same treatment. The owner was at the end of his rope. He decided to send his son. Surely, he thought, they will respect my son. But when the farmhands saw the son arrive, they rubbed their hands and greed. This is the heir. Let's kill him and have it all for ourselves. They grabbed him, threw him out, and killed him. Now, when the owner of the vineyard arrives home from his trip, what do you think he will do to the farmhands? He'll kill them, those wretches, and good riddance, they answered. Then he'll assign the vineyard to farmhands who will hand over the prophets when it's time. Jesus said, right. And you can read it for yourselves in the scriptures. The stone the masons threw out is now the cornerstone. This is God's work and is amazing in our eyes. This is the way it is with you. God's kingdom will be taken back from you and handed over to a people who will live out a kingdom life. Whoever stumbles on the stone gets shattered. Whoever the stone falls on gets smashed. When the religious leaders heard this story, they knew it was aimed at them. They wanted to arrest Jesus and put him in jail, but intimidated by public opinion, they held back because most people held him to be a prophet of God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace to you, my beloved, from the one who tends the vineyards of this world with care and love. Amen. So you know how a scripture reading is just so bad that you are willing to do almost anything to find the good news in it, including but not limited to reading commentaries until you fall asleep. Googling famous preachers to see what they have to say, promising God that if they give you just a hint of what this story is really about, you will try your hardest to be nicer to the people who annoy you, and finally translating the passage from Greek to English all by yourself, even though that even though you know that it is pointless. Well, yeah, that was me this week, trying to wring just a tiny drop of grace from a cornerstone that apparently just crushes people under its weight if they haven't already died in a vineyard a few verses before. Which honestly, in light of the week I have had, feels just about right. And so as I sat in my living room on Friday afternoon, playing this text over and over again in my mind, as I finished getting ready to help a family say goodbye to someone that they loved later that night, I was pretty sure that either I was going to preach the most depressing sermon in the history of sermons, or we were just going to have some quiet time today to think about Jesus. Okay, Rebecca, 
I finally said out loud to myself and the animals, because I always talk to myself out loud when no one else is around. Okay, Rebecca, this is it. You have to write something, even if it sucks, because if you don't, you literally will not have time to do all the things you need to do this weekend. And because I am so very convincing, I opened up a new document on my computer and wrote worst parable ever across it, which honestly wasn't very helpful. And so giving myself my second pep talk of the afternoon, I opened up the text one more time. And that is when I noticed for the first time in almost 15 years of preaching that the text that Jesus quotes about the cornerstone is from Psalm 118. Now, if you don't know how this psalm begins, let me read it to you. Thank God because he's good the psalmist says. Yes, thank God because he's good, because his love never quits. Tell the world, Israel, his love never quits. And you, clan of Aaron, tell the world his love never quits. And you who fear God, join in his love never quits. Well, that's interesting. I said out loud to myself, I wonder why in the middle of a parable that is soaked in blood and violence is Jesus choosing to quote a song that is essentially about God's love, about the promise of hope? Well, as it turns out, this psalm, Psalm 118, isn't just some random psalm that Jesus quotes, but it is the psalm that would have been sung by Jews in Israel at the temple in Jerusalem at the Feast of Tabernacles. Think something like our Palm Sunday. We're together with one voice, waving palms and shouting, Hosanna, God save us, a whole congregation of Israelites would have sung a song about God's unfailing love. How even though over the years they had been rejected, hurt, abused, how they had wandered without homes or land or friends in a God-forsaken desert, that God had still found a way to use them, to make them a cornerstone among the peoples, a place where people could see faith, could see a people who knew that hope existed even in the midst of the things that tried to break them. And so for Jesus to sing this psalm after a long and violent parable, yes, for Jesus, a man without a home, without many friends, without his own land, who has been wandering around between cities and towns telling people that the kingdom of God is at hand, that he is literally God standing among them. Yes, for Jesus to sing this song of all songs to the temple leaders who have been entrusted all these years with the caring of God's vineyard. Well, it's almost like a mini miracle, a tiny glimpse in the midst of a heartbreaking story, a tiny glimpse of resurrection. For you see, Jesus says as he sings, even though it would make sense, That after all these years of violence, after all these times that you have killed my prophets, after all these years that you have stored up God's blessings for yourselves and refused to share them with those most in need, after all these times you have tried to make faith into a rule or a doctrine or a right set of beliefs, after what I know you will do to me and not too long on the cross, yes, even though Jesus says it would make sense sense in this moment for me to seek revenge on you. I won't. I can't, for I am God's love. I am God's hope. I am life. I am the promise that even when things fall apart, when things break, When violence comes and crosses fill the landscape, I am the promise that love will never quit, that death 
will never win. That hate will never triumph. That fear will never prevail. Yes, I am the promise, Jesus sings, that there will always be another chance, that I will always sing a song of hope into the world. And if that weren't good news enough, the fact that Jesus stands there and sings a song that is meant to be sung not by one person alone, by us alone, but he sings a song that is meant to be sung by a whole community of people, well, that means that we will never be asked to sing this kind of song alone either. Yes, that means that you and I whose individual ways, as Jesus reminds us in his parable, sometimes lean more towards anger or indifference or resentment or selfishness or impatience or assumptions or hate. Yes, it means that you and I are part of a community who promises to sing for us when we can't, who promises to sing us into a different way of being, who promises to sing us from our individual small acts of well-culted violence to become a community of people who carries in our bones the promise of hope, of belovedness, of grace. So that not only will we believe that this is who God is, that this is who we are created to be, but we will begin to believe that this is our song to sing to, to live, to embody to embrace with and for each other. And I don't know about you, my beloved, but to know that I do not ever sing alone, that the one who lived through violence and heartbreak and brokenness just like I do, just like we do, just like we still do too. Yes, to know that this one sings with and for me, as do all of you, is more than enough good news for today and all days. So thanks be to God, for God is good, because God's love will never quit. Amen. My song is love unknown, my Savior's love to me, love to the loveless shown that they might lovely be. Oh, who am I that for my sake my Lord should take frail flesh and die? Never was left, dear King, never was grieved.
Our service for this morning continues with the prayers of the people, and I invite you, as is our practice, to type any prayer requests that you have into the comments of our worship service, trusting that they will be held by me and by our community this week. And so let us pray fervently for the church, the earth, and its animals, peace, and the poor. We pray for the church locally and globally for joy and discernment for our life together. We pray for the earth and its animals, for habitats that are threatened, for service animals, for creation, for the sustaining of earth. We pray for peace between nations and peoples, in churches and in homes, for the gift of wisdom. We pray for all who are suffering, for those in need of justice, for those whose sorrow is known by you, for those with mental illness. We pray for the poor, the unemployed and underemployed, for migrants, for the marginalized, for those in need. We pray for the prayers of our hearts. We pray for the faithful who have gone before, for the promise of the resurrection, and for those who mourn. Enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray, O God, as we place our trust in you. Amen. Our service continues with the meal. God feeds us with the presence of Jesus Christ. And so let us pause to offer all of what we have and all of who we are to the one who gave their whole life for our sake. And so may God be with you. And also with you. People of God, lift up your hearts. We will turn to the one who is grace and peace. Beloved of God, let us give thanks and praise. We join our voices in giving thanks to God and community, holy and one. Amen. Amen. Composer of creation, planter of love, spirit of confidence, as we do in our places what you did in an upstairs room, send down your Holy Spirit on us and on our gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us your body as we become yours. For among friends gathered round a table, Jesus took bread and broke it and said, This is my body broken for you. Later he took a cup of wine and said, This is the new relationship with God made possible because of my death. Take it, all of you, to remember me. Amen. And so gathered around God's table, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So Jesus invites you to this table. Come, eat, and live. This is the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. And so what if Christ shed for you? And so may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Our service for today concludes with the sending. And so a blessing for all of you. We go now in the name of God so that this world might know grace. Amen. We go now in the name of Jesus, so that this world might know justice. Amen. We go now in the name of the Holy Spirit, so that this world might know hope. Amen. We go now in the name of community, so that this world might know the living body of Christ through our lives. Amen. Long 
Longing for light, we wait in darkness. Longing for truth, we turn to you. Make us your own, your holy people. Light for the world to see. And so go in peace, my beloved, ready to love and serve the world. And thank you so much for worshiping with us this week. And I cannot wait to worship with all of you again soon.